Have you ever wondered how people make their photos look so good? Well, today I'm going to teach you how to color grade like a professional. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomic and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at how you can color grade your photos like a professional. We're going to be using Adobe Lightroom. You can use it either on your desktop or your mobile, but for today's purposes, we're going to jump straight into the desktop version and get started. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how people turn their photos from something like this into something amazing like this, it actually isn't too hard and it doesn't take much longer than maybe two or three minutes. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to take this photo back to its original state. This is how it was shot. It was shot against the sun, very dark, very underexposed. And originally I thought it was unusable, but thankfully this photo was shot in raw, which means you can bring out a lot of the shadows and highlights back into play. So in Adobe Lightroom, you're going to see this panel on the right hand side. This is where your main functions are, and this is what you're going to need to use the most. Don't be intimidated by the fact that there's quite a few settings here. It gets very simple to use after a couple times of trying it out. The first thing you want to do is remove any chromatic aberration and also enable profile corrections. So with my camera, it picks up what camera it is and what lens it is, which makes it very easy and efficient for me to do for every photo time and time again. The second thing you want to do with almost every photo is tap the level correction. In this case, it's moved the level a little bit too far and we need to also tick the crop constraint. But simply straight away you can tell that the photo is now centered, it's level with the horizon and there doesn't need to be too many more adjustments. After this you want to scroll to the top and get started on the basic corrections of the photo. So as we've already said this photo is underexposed and the highlights are blown out. So we're going to remove the highlights, bring them back to about maybe minus 60, minus 65 somewhere there and bring the shadows up as much as we can without overdoing it. If you go to 100, you're going to notice that it starts to get a bit too grainy and you lose a lot of the clarity in the blacks. So we're going to bring it back down to maybe 70% 70, 70 in the positive. And because we can see straight away that bringing up the shadows has destroyed the contrast and destroyed the blacks, we're going to drop the blacks down a little bit lower to try and get some more deep, rich colors in this photo and also bring up the contrast a little bit more to make it a bit punchier. If you've never used an S-curb before, it's a very simple process to use. Down the bottom here is all your shadows. This section here is your midtones, and at the very top is your highlights. So as you adjust each section is how it's gonna change that particular part of the photo. I always start with a three point S-curve. So for me, it's three points across the middle, starting with the shadows at the bottom. The shadows usually are bumped up a little bit just to bring out that extra little bit that's been lost in the details and then dropping the blacks down a little bit more so it starts to create that S shape. I normally don't touch too many of the mid-tones because this is usually around the face and the skin tones in most of my photography but I do play with the highlights a little bit as well so if we bring the highlights down you're going to notice that the sky comes into clarity a bit more and that we're able to remove the harshness of the sun and that's pretty much all you have it for my S curve in this photo. You can also drop it down and go to the red, green, blue filters, which gives you different overlays. And for example, if we put a red filter in, you start to get those deep blues in the shadows, which is a very trendy theme on Instagram at the moment, or the reds coming through in the faces. If you're looking for the cinematography, a little bit age shot, you can go with that as well. But personally, I don't like them at all. So I don't add any reds, greens or blues into the photo itself. Now this is where the fun starts and you really can get creative with the colors and the saturation in your photo. So for me, I personally always start with saturation and try to make the mood of the photo work to the best of my advantage. In this one, you can tell that the reds are mainly in my face um, and a little bit in the skin tone, so we don't bump them up too much. I always have a tendency to move my sliders up to maximum just to understand where the colors are in that photo and how much I really want to move them up. So in this one, you can tell that it's in the orange and the trees and also in my face. So we pump it up a little bit to about 30%. Same as the yellows. I think they're predominantly coming out in this little sun flare straight down the middle of the photo. So we're going to bump it up to maybe about 10%, not much more than that. The greens is always your trees usually, but it isn't really bringing out too much except in the sun flare. So we're not going to bring that one up 
pretty much at all. Um, if you're using the desktop version, a good trick is just double click on the slider or the uh, name of the color itself to reset it without having to try line it back up with the zero. The aquas in this photo are gonna be the start of the ocean and the blues are gonna be the same merging into the sky. We don't wanna overdo it here, so we're gonna just leave the blues and the aquas about 20%. The purples are something I always have a tendency to remove almost to the bottom, usually in between 50 and 100% in the minus side, because in my camera, I found that it's predominantly the chromatic admiration in my photo. So I have a tendency to remove my purples and magentas as much as possible. Now, if we move over to the hues of the photo, from memory that the reds, the orange, and the yellows are the primary colors in this photo and the blues in the background. So if we wanna make the blues a little bit more of a teal color, just to give it more of a vibrant pop, and the greens a little bit more vibrant as well. Whereas the yellows and the oranges were not gonna to move too much, but you can tell that in the face, it is a little bit too orange. So we're gonna move it slightly to the yellow side to try to get those natural skin colors back into play. So only four in the plus on the orange is all it takes in this photo. Split toning is one of the things that you don't need to do in any standard photo grading, but it is something that you'll see in most professional level photo edits. So adding a hue to your highlights and your shadows is very similar to using the S curve, but you have a bit more control in your colors. So to really understand what it does, we're gonna pump it up to about 40% and slide the hue across. Because this photo is taken outside near the ocean, I really wanna reflect those blues into the sky and into the highlights a little bit more, but obviously not having it at such a high saturation. So putting a tiny little bit of blue at about 10% is perfect for this photo. Whereas the shadows, we wanna add a little bit more orange to get a bit more vibrance of the sun coming through. Now we can see that this photo is pretty crisp. There's a little bit of noise coming through. So we're only gonna add a little bit of luminance to take away the noise and make it an even sharper photo. Now, obviously these photos for most people will be going up on Instagram. So the last thing that we need to do is do the crop overlay, go original four by five, which is the Instagram crop filter, and then adjust it how you want it. And that's all there is to it guys. So in less than five minutes, we've managed to take a photo from almost unusable to an Instagram banger. There really isn't much more to it than that, guys. You can apply the same principle to almost any photo you have on your phone or straight off your DSLR camera. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button 2019 style, and I'll see you next Monday for a brand new econ video.